With this example, we're going to look at using the chain rule in conjunction with the product rule to evaluate the derivative of something of this nature. Whenever we have to use two techniques together, so in this case the chain rule and the product rule, it can oftentimes be helpful if we break it down into parts, smaller parts, so that we don't get ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> so we can see that in order to take the derivative, the overarching thing is we're going to have to do a product. So we're going to do a product of f right, and g. So we identify this is my f function, this is my g function. So we remind ourselves, okay, the product rule is derivative of the first times the second, right, plus the first times the derivative of the second. <clears throat> so all we have to do now is calculate those individual parts. So f is just 2x minus 3 to the fourth. So f prime is 4 times 2x minus 3 cubed, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. <clears throat> That's the chain rule, right? So we can clean that up, and we can just make it 8 times 2x minus 3 cubed. Then we look at g, and g is x squared plus x plus 1 to the fifth. So g prime, 5, x squared plus x plus 1 to the fourth, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus 1. And so again, we can clean this up, right, and list it as 10x plus 5 times x squared plus x plus 1 to the fourth. So now it's just a matter of uh, plugging in our four pieces into the product rule. So f prime. times g, right, the original second piece, plus f, the original piece, times g prime, And that is our derivative. Now, if we have to reduce this, meaning if we're thinking ahead to where we're going to maybe take a derivative and set it equal to zero, if we set this equal to zero, we're not going to be able to solve it because of this plus, right? We can only basically set a product equal to zero and have any hope of finding zeros. So we need to change this sum of two pieces into a product which means we have to um, factor out what the two pieces have, these two terms, what they have in common, and then we can turn it into a product of that greatest common factor and what's left over. So you'll notice that both pieces have an x minus 3 to a power, and then both pieces have this to a power, and then they have these leftover linear terms which don't have anything in common, right? Like we could take a, a number out of here, but the only number we can take out of this one is 5, right? So we can't factor a 5 out of both, so those, are, those don't help. So we can factor uh, a 2x minus 3 and an x squared plus x plus 1. But we actually have three of them on this side and four of them on this side, so we can take three out of both. And then we have five of this one and four on that side, so we can take four out of both. And then we write down what's left. Well, on the left side, we still have the eight. We took all three of these. We took four of those, so we have one left. 
and then plus. On the right hand side we still have one more of these. We have the linear term. And then we took all four of those away, so that one's gone. So we're almost there, right? We got a product of one, two, and then this thing. But again, if we set this equal to zero, we can't really do anything, right? We can set this equal to zero, and that's fine. We can set this one equal to zero, and that's fine. We can solve a quadratic. Uh, but this stuff, we can't solve as it sits, so we have to combine like terms, you know, foil everything out. So we've got uh, 8x squared plus 8x plus 8, and then foil this out, right? So 2 times 10, so we've got plus 20x squared plus 10x minus 30x minus 15. So clean that up, that's uh, 28x squared. We've got 8x and 10x, so that's plus 18x. Oh wait, nope, forgot the 30. So let's get rid of that. So we have 8x, 10x and negative 30x, so that's 18 minus 30, so that's negative 12x, and then the 8 and the negative 15 gives me negative 7. Well, unfortunately, this doesn't reduce. You know, we can't pull a constant out of it, but it is a quadratic. We can use the quadratic formula, and we can find zeros of that uh, relatively easily. So at this point, we are done. It's reduced as far as it's going to go. And then if we had to, right, we don't have to for this problem, but if we had to um, for a different problem actually solve this, we can now set this equal to zero, which means each one of these pieces are set equal to zero. And we can solve them. You know, this one's very easily. That's just three halves. This we can use the quadratic formula this we can use the quadratic formula and there you go